Just imagine a car that can go anywhere without needing fuel or connection to a charging station. In this video, we will unpack the secrets of the latest solar car that has turned heads and has fascinated people world over. Recently, news came out that a solar car named Stella Terra completed a thousand kilometers journey from northern Morocco to the Sahara. Remarkably, it did it completely self-sufficiently. The car generated its own energy, both as it traveled and while it remained stationary. Furthermore, during this journey, it traveled through dry riverbeds, forest areas, steep mountain trails, and through loose desert sand. This proved to the world that solar cars have evolved out of being just urban vehicles. They can now take on dusty tracks. Stella Terra may have just appeared on the scene, but it has years of engineering evolution behind it. It was developed by solar team Eindhoven. This is a team of 22 enthusiastic students from Eindhoven University of Technology. This group has produced solar cars that have won four consecutive World Solar Challenge races between 2013 and 2019. For those who aren't aware, the World Solar Challenge is an international event for solar power cars driving 3,000 kilometers through the Australian outback. The most recent product of the group is the Stella Terra, which is their sixth solar car. This car has taken the performance to another level by demonstrating its capability of going around rocks and climbing slopes. The team has once again proven to the world that solar cars are a reality that cannot be ignored anymore. It was Solar Team's decision to take a break from the World Solar Challenge that resulted in this breakthrough. The group felt that the participation in the event and its regulations are restricting them from making this technology more mainstream. Note that for the race, there are rules in place for maximum car weight, the size of the battery, maximum outer dimensions, and even solar array area. The goal of the race is to churn out as many fast miles from solar juice as possible during daytime. On the other hand, practicality dictates that a car should be such that it can be driven during nighttime and even in cloudy weather conditions. Based on this, Stella Terra and its predecessor Stella Vita which was a self-sufficient camper vehicle, went big. Even from the first glance, what sets the Stella Terra apart is that it looks more like an SUV than a traditional solar car. Its wheels are wider, it sits higher on the ground, it looks to have plenty of room even though it is a two-seater. Its bespoke suspension was designed to handle rough terrain. So, let's have a look at the distinguishing specs of this remarkable vehicle. The estimated battery pack inside the car is at least 60 kilowatt hour in capacity. The Stella Terra has a top speed of 145 kilometers per hour and weighs only 1200 kilograms. It has a range of 630 kilometers on a sunny day. To compare that with Tesla Model 3 that has similar size battery pack, we find that the Model 3 is about 1800 kg in weight. This implies that the Model 3 is 600 kg heavier. The lighter weight is one of the reasons that give the Stella Terra its high range. The lower weight is due to glass fiber body and optimized vehicle frame. It is interesting to note that the battery packs in the group's initial cars that is Stella Lux and Stella V were just 15 kilowatt hours. For more practical, roadworthy cars, the team decided to have a larger battery pack. The solar arrays used in their latest cars, that is the Terra and the Vita, are much larger and look different. This is because they use fiberglass integrated PV panels with state-of-the-art Skylar lamination scheme that is designed to optimize energy production. Microstructures on the top surface reduce reflection and bend sunlight towards the solar cells, increasing the power output. The scheme captures light reflected from inside the module, further boosting production. The solar cells used were SunPower's Maxion that have a high efficiency value of over 24%. 
When parked, additional panels in the Stellar Terra can be deployed, thereby not only capturing extra energy to store in batteries, but also doubling as an awning and providing shelter. In total, the solar panels are 16 square meters when extended. The top speed of the Terra is 140 kilometers per hour or 90 miles per hour. Its aerodynamic design is reminiscent of the Tatra T77, which was one of the first truly aerodynamic cars in the automobile history. It is the sloping rear of the vehicle that gives it a very low coefficient of drag compared to other vehicles of its size. The motor used for powering the vehicle is also unique. The team used Protean's PD18 in-wheel motor that not only cuts down the number of parts and takes out the transmission losses, but also provides sufficient room for placing the battery pack. To quantify the efficiency of in-wheel motors, consider the following. When driving at 70 miles per hour for an hour, a wheel motor would use 2.94 kilowatt hour less energy. This is because Drivetrain losses can be up to 94 watt-hour per mile for central motor system as compared to 52 watt-hour per mile for a wheel motor system. Essentially, that means that vehicle's battery capacity is used more efficiently, leading to greater range. The torque provided by the motor is 1400 newton meters. Solar team Eindhoven also built its own transformer to convert the DC output of the solar panel to AC input for driving the motors. They also made their own PCBs that included MPPT boats. Their electrical conversion efficiency remained very high, that is up to 97%. Special comfortable driving seats were made for the car as well as bespoke suspensions. This car is something straight out of a science fiction movie. Who wouldn't want a Stella Terra in the wasteland of Mad Max? The Stella Terra provides a template for the automakers. The impressive range and self-sufficiency of this vehicle makes it ideally suited for many regions across the globe that have underdeveloped roads and unreliable energy grids. Mass production will reduce the vehicle cost substantially. We hope that automakers with far superior resources at their disposal would carry this effort forward. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, then please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.